Let's take a look at how we subtract vectors. Okay, little warm-up exercise for you. You know what vector addition is here. So here's the addition of the vectors a plus b. Now we know that subtraction is just adding the opposite. So when we just had regular numbers and we wanted to go 4 minus 3, we could think of that as 4 plus minus 3 to get an answer of 1. Now, what do you think the opposite would be with a vector? What's the opposite to this vector b equals 3 here? So what I'd like you to think about right now is what would the vector a minus b look like if we were to do another scale diagram below? And I'm not going to take up the answer right now. I just want you to think about it before we head into the video. So is vector subtraction really going to be important in physics? Well, let me write down three of the most fundamental equations in all of physics. The first is the definition of velocity. Definition of velocity is the rate of change of displacement. That is, it's the final position minus the initial position. Subtracting vectors divided by the time elapsed. Another definition, acceleration, is the rate of change of velocity. That is, it's the final velocity minus the initial velocity. That is a subtraction of vectors divided by time. And perhaps the most famous equation in all of physics, F equals ma. Well, that equation really only works if you have a constant mass. The more general equation for Newton's second law is that F is equal to the rate of change of momentum. So it's equal to p final minus p initial divided by how much time has elapsed. So once again, you're subtracting vectors. The initial momentum is being subtracted from the final momentum. So three of the most fundamental equations in all of physics all use vector subtraction. So yes, it's important. So what does it mean to subtract the vector x1 from x2? That is, what does this represent? Well, I suggested in the warm-up exercise that what you need to do is to add the opposite. So we're going to add negative x1, where negative x1 is the opposite vector. And an opposite vector is going to be exactly what it sounds like. Here's the opposite of the vector x1. It's just exactly the same length, but in exactly the opposite direction. That's the opposite vector. So what we need to do is join these two vectors head to tail. So let's do that. I'll join the head of the red vector to the tail of the green vector. And then my resultant will go from that first tail to that last head, which is to say this is my resultant vector. That's the vector x2 minus x1. Or if you remember the warm-up exercise, what we'd need to do there is take that vector a and add it not to b, but add it to negative b in the opposite direction, same length. And your resultant will go from that first tail to that last head. So this here is the vector a minus b. And that's it. So if you're good at adding vectors, you're going to be equally good at subtracting vectors, because it's really the same thing. Now most math physics types are a little bit lazy and drawing opposite vectors is a little bit difficult. So it turns out there's kind of an easier way of doing it. And what you do is you take your two vectors x1 and x2 and you just join them together tail to tail like you did in the parallelogram method. And you'll find that the vector x2 minus x1 will go from the head of x1 to the tail of x2. So in fact if you complete your parallelogram one diagonal will be x2 minus x1 and the other diagonal is going to be x1 plus x2. So you get two birds with one stone. Even though you're in a visual sense you're able to eliminate the opposite vector when you do a diagram of vector subtraction, you still can't eliminate it mathematically. So mathematically, we need to be able to represent a opposite vector. But it's very, very simple. So here's a vector. So that would be the vector 3, 1. And if this angle here is theta, 
then the opposite vector, which would look like that, would have the angle 180 degrees plus theta. So if we took the polar vector 55, 28, the opposite vector would still have the same length, but the new angle would be 28 degrees plus 180 degrees. And then for the component, well, here's our vector 3, 1. The opposite vector is the vector negative 3, negative 1. So all you have to do to a vector that's in Cartesian components is to make each component the opposite sign. So this would be a plus 8 and a minus 5 as the opposite vector. In this example, we've got a plane. It's speeding up a bit from 500 kilometers per hour to 550 kilometers per hour. But there's actually a bigger change in its motion because it's changing directions as well from north to west. And so its acceleration is going to depend not just on that change in speed, but also on the change in direction. So what I'd like you to do is see how far you can make out with this question. So you're just going to use a definition of acceleration. It's equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity as vectors divided by the time it took to make that change in velocity. So pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So I've drawn my two vectors, vf and vi. I've also drawn the opposite of vi, negative vi. And I'm just going to write down the three vectors. So my first vector here, the length of the vector is 550. Remember, length of a vector can never be negative. It's always positive. It's also called the magnitude of the vector. Direction there, well, it's in the negative x direction, which is going to be 180 degrees. My initial velocity was 500 kilometers per hour to the north, so the magnitude is 500, and the direction is 90 degrees. And of course, the opposite of that vector will be to the south, so it still has the same magnitude, 500, but this time it has a heading of 270 degrees, or 90 plus 180 degrees. So now let's switch to Cartesian component form. First vector here, it's got nothing along the y direction. It's got no component in the y direction. So we don't need to use r cos theta, r sine theta here because our vectors are vertical or horizontal. So we can just look at them and see what's going on. Now the vector points in the negative x direction. It's to the left. All of its speed is to the left in that direction. So it's negative 550. Now vi here, it has nothing in the x direction. So that x component has to be 0. All of its speed lies in the positive y direction. So this will be positive 500 kilometers per hour. And then, of course, the opposite of vi, I can simply take the negative of these numbers. It's going to be 0, negative 500. And notice what that means. All of that velocity is in the negative y direction. So now what we can do is simply add the vector and its opposite to find vf minus vi. Negative 550 plus 0 for the x components, and then 0 minus 500 for the y components, which is going to come out to be negative 550 and negative 500. Let's just check if that seems right. Here's vi, and here's vf. So we've got a 500 and a 550. My vector subtraction should go from the initial head to the final head, like so. That would be my Vf minus Vi. And you'll notice here that it is pointing in that third quadrant, so we should get two negatives for Vf minus Vi. Now, what I'm really after here is the acceleration, which is going to be Vf minus Vi all over t. And all you need to do here is to divide each component by t. So my acceleration as a vector is going to be negative 550 divided by 4 minutes. And that's in kilometers per hour. And negative 500 kilometers per hour divided by 4 minutes. If you work that out, you're going to get negative 137.5 kilometers per hour every minute and 125 negative kilometers 
per hour every minute for the y acceleration. So now I've actually, I've actually solved the problem at this point, but I would like to come back and express my final answer in polar coordinates. And I'm expecting to get a polar angle somewhere between 180 and 270. And I'm expecting a length of this vector to be, should be about 600 or 700 divided by the 4 minutes. So let's see what we get. Magnitude of the acceleration is going to be, we're just going to use Pythagorean theorem, so it's going to be 137.5 all squared plus 125 all squared. Plug that into your calculator and you should get an answer of about 186 kilometers per hour every minute. So it's changing its velocity by 186 kilometers per hour every minute. And our angle will be the inverse tan of the y component divided by the x component. They're both negative in this case. So it's going to be negative 125 divided by negative 137.5. And in this case, you've got a negative x. So notice that negative there. That means we're going to have to add 180 degrees. Plug that into your calculator. And you should get an answer there of about 222 degrees. And that agrees that this angle here looks like it would be about 222 degrees. So we're getting reasonable answers there. And this is how you work out the acceleration when you have a changing velocity that's changing not only in its speed, but also in its direction. Okay, I have a couple of IB questions for you. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video, read the question over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. So we've got these two vectors, x and y. There's x in red and y is in green. If I want to add them, y is the negative one, so I need to add the opposite of y. Here's the opposite of y. If I add the opposite of y to x, I get this answer b here. Now if I'd use the other method, then I join the two vectors y and x tail to tail and the vector would run from the y to the x. So that's the correct answer. Your correct answer is B. Now if you haven't studied relative velocity you might want to skip this question. However if you want to try it anyways what you need to imagine is we're looking for the velocity of y relative to x. So imagine that x does not, does not know that he's moving. And there's basically nothing else in the universe except for y. So what does y's motion look like relative to him if he assumes he's not moving, if he assumes he's at rest? So pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So hopefully you realized that you're going to have to subtract off that vx from vy. So I'm going to add the opposite. And that means my best answer is going to be D down here. That Y will look like he's moving across like so. Here's the third question. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. So in this question, you've got an initial velocity right here and a final velocity right here. So if, I, so if I want to subtract to find delta V, which is Vf minus Vi, I can either add the opposite or I can join my two tails together, which would mean there's Vi and there's Vf. And then my resultant will go from Vi to Vf. That would be delta V. And that is answer C right here. And you'll notice here that delta V is pointing towards the center of the circle. Okay, let's summarize the results. So let's suppose we've got two vectors, x2 and x1. And we want to subtract the two. So we're going to perform the operation x2 minus x1. We could do it two ways. We could add the opposite or at least visually we could do it two ways, which would mean there's x2. I want to add x2 to the opposite of x1. 
there's the opposite of x1. So my resultant would go from this first tail to that last head. That would be x2 minus x1. As an alternative way, we can join the two vectors tail to tail. So we'd have x2 and we'd have x1. And our resultant would go from x1 to x2, like so. And so these two should be the same length and the same direction. They're both x2 minus x1. Mathematically, we complete a vector subtraction exactly the same way as we do vector addition, except for one thing. What you're going to do is add the opposite vector. So instead of adding the vector x1, we're going to add the vector negative x1. And by negative x1, that just means in Cartesian component form, if you had the vector 2, negative 3, then as your x vector, as your x1 vector, then the opposite of the vector x1 would simply be each one of those components multiplied by a negative. So you get negative 2 and plus 3. So if you can do vector addition, you can certainly do vector subtraction. And that's the whole thing. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.